your forecast first. Sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. It is once again a mild start to our day with temperatures actually a little bit warmer than where they were at this point yesterday in the 30s and even some 40s out there. 41 in Lincoln, 40 in Paris, 38 degrees in Mattoon, and 37 degrees in Danville. This is our view in Charleston, though, on our first mid-weather camera on our roofing dog guy. Again, we got clouds out there. The good news is, as we go later on into the day, we will see more in the way of some sunshine. Our winds are out of the southwest right now, pretty light, up to around 10 miles per hour. And so as we go through the day today, we'll see our skies begin to clear out a bit more, so we'll see more sunshine temperatures will be getting close to 50 degrees for our high today, so probably going to be the nicest day of the week. But we have a chance for a few light showers for the day tomorrow. WCI 3 News starts right now. Good morning, everybody. I'm Aaron Eads. And I'm Christy Batista. We have a lot for you in the next hour of the morning show, but first, we're going to take a look at your eye opener. Speeding is an issue along this stretch of road. Why police say they plan to stop it. Plus, a bus ride that leaves little to the imagination. We'll tell you about it in our trending topic. Oh boy, come in and hop there. <laughs> and Nev is here from the Champaign County Humane Society. He's today's pet on the set. All of this is coming up in this hour of the morning show that starts right now. You're watching your local news leader. This is the morning show on WCIA 3 News. From our Target 3 investigative team, the Piatt County Board Chair was arrested yesterday. And officials say the board knew about his crimes and did nothing about it. Ray Spencer's arrest came hours after a grand jury indicted him on four felony charges. Court documents say Spencer forged an email from the county state's attorney, making it appear like she'd given legal advice that she actually didn't give. They also say he tried to hire an outside lawyer on behalf of the county. That attempt cost the county nearly $10,000. He cannot legally replace the state's attorney with another lawyer. Documents also say the entire county board knew about his conduct and let Spencer remain chair. He faces charges of official misconduct and forgery. You can read more about what he's accused of on WCIA.com. We have an update on a deadly fire in Springfield. The death of a woman found inside is being investigated as a murder. It happened on South State near Cook Street on Saturday. Abby Niesler died, but the coroner says someone killed her before the fire started. Police are now investigating. A woman in Champaign County was sentenced for aggravated battery. Michelle Reed from Tolono shook and threw then six-month-old Leyland Duncan while she was babysitting him in 2017. He suffered brain damage and other injuries. Reed was sentenced to three and a half years in prison. A man in Danville accused of breaking into the home of an elderly man pleaded guilty. Marcus Edwards broke into the apartment of a 96-year-old, threatened him with a baseball bat, and forced him to get his wallet. He took away with money. He took off with money, but cut himself, leaving a trail of blood for officers to follow. He could spend up to 30 years in prison. An apartment fire on Friday displaced more than a dozen people. This happened at a complex on Garden Drive off of Bowman Avenue in Danville. It started as a kitchen fire and spread through the wall. Crew spent five hours there and were called back Sunday night when it rekindled. One business in Hoopston is trying to regroup after a large fire Sunday night. First responders were sent after eight for a fire at McCord Trucking. The fire was electrical and started in the dash of one of the trucks. Two other cars in the garage were destroyed, but they say the actual structure should be sound enough to use again. No one was hurt. The state's Department of Ag director has stepped down amidst an investigation into a possible rape cover-up. Governor Pritzker called on former state Senator John Sullivan to resign. This comes after a state worker sent an email in 2012 that alluded to a rape in Champaign. Sullivan is not a suspect, but the governor says Sullivan knew about it and did not report it. Police in Danville are looking for speeders on one stretch of road. Officers are targeting Denmark Road by the Dallas Bowman Bridge. That's right off Logan Avenue. Police added more patrols and noticed drivers regularly going 20 miles above the speed limit. They've handed out 15 speeding tickets there in the past few weeks, but they say their end goal is safety. You can probably talk to some people who've been involved with accidents or families or friends that have been involved in accidents because of speeds from minor injuries all the way up to puffs, possibly costing lives. So that's why we take it serious. Police say they regularly get complaints about speeders. They do their best to enforce the speed limit in response to those calls. College police departments are looking at how the new marijuana laws are affecting what they do. The chief of police at Parkland College went over the do's and don'ts of marijuana with us. In addition to reminding people the campus is drug-free and that you have to be 21 or older to buy it, he says the campus is also smoke-free. It's important students and visitors remember smoking anything of any kind is breaking the law. We want to have that communication uh, to a level that's effective, that people know that it's a non-smoking campus and they, they choose not to 
break the law. Um, the last thing we want to do is really, you know, write somebody a, a monetary citation. We will if we have to, right. but we, we're not seeking to do that. To see our full interview with the chief regarding marijuana and college campuses, head to WCIA.com. New businesses are preparing to open up along Curtis Road this year. Now the Village of Savoy is making a push to make the busy road safer. WCI3's Jen Lask is live in our control room this morning. Jen, what does the city or village want to do? They want to apply for a federal grant for a railroad crossing, and they hope the third time is the charm. Now, they want to make the crossing that's at Curtis Road, just east of Highway 45, safer by setting up an underpass at the crossing and then adding bike lanes and better crosswalks to Curtis. Officials say that will make it safer for both drivers and pedestrians. Curtis Road has become the main access point for Savoy after the Curtis Road interchange at I-57 opened back in 2008, and with more businesses opening up around Carl at the fields. Village President Joan Dykstra calls this project a top priority. That is a very important component to the village of Savoy. Life safety and there's uh, ambulance and fire uh, trucks and pedestrians and cars. It's a really big uh, deal for the village of Savoy. If approved, the project would get funding from local, state, and federal grants. Savoy is looking for nearly $20 million through federal funding, and that would cover nearly half of the project. They need about $39 million total, and so far, Savoy has secured half. They plan to apply again for this grant in the spring. Live in the control room, Jen Lask, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Decatur's airport is adding a flight to Chicago. SkyWest Airlines will fly to and from O'Hare starting in March. The 50-passenger jet will fly out of Decatur and Chicago at least once a day, sometimes twice. We have the flight schedule on WCIA.com. It's costing you less to fill up at the pump, at least it has in the last week. Prices for a gallon dropped more than a dime in Champaign. A gallon is averaging $2.44. That's also more than a dime less than it was a month ago. $2.54. But it's 58 cents higher than this time last year, $1.86. Across the country, a gallon of gas is averaging $2.57. All right, now that you're up to speed on the top news headlines, let's get to the weather. Hey, Jack, what's going on outside right now? Hey, Christy, it's just kind of cloudy out there. A little bit of some fog in some spots, but overall, though, we're looking at things beginning to clear out here over the next couple hours, so we'll see more in the way of some sunshine. You can see the clouds there, uh, excuse me, on our satellite picture there, but in terms of the radar, it's nice and quiet. We are expecting a dry day for today, and we're also expecting there to be more sunshine later on today as well. A lot of rain down in the southeast, but that stays far away from us, and there's a couple snow showers moving through parts of the Dakotas as well as Minnesota. Again, that's also going to be staying away from us. There'll be a chance for a few light showers for the day tomorrow, but we'll talk about that in the uh, full forecast later on. In the meantime, though, our temperatures for our Tuesday, starting off the morning, pretty nice at 36 in Champaign, 38 degrees in Pontiac, already up to 40 degrees in Paris. So it's a mild start to our day, especially compared to 24 hours ago when we look at those. We're about 5 degrees or even closer to 10 degrees warmer right now compared to 24 hours ago. Winds are pretty light today out of the southwest, and so as a result of that, our temperatures will be able to get into the 40s and 50s. So as you see with your Casper, your high temperatures today, we've got temperatures once again above average. A lot of us will be in the upper 40s and low 50s, and we will see more sunshine later on in the afternoon, guys. Okay, what are we talking about today? <laughs> I do not know. <laughs> I'm I'm afraid that I do know. Okay. Uh, uh, Christy, okay. you wanna? Sure. Women in the workforce, passengers without pants. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and a lonely mogul. All right. <laughs> okay, we're gonna start with this one. A major <laughs> milestone for women on the jobs front for the first time since the Great Recession. I guess that makes sense why I'm reading this, right? Uh, women now outnumber men in the workforce. It's according to new data from the Labor Department. It found women now occupy more than 50% of non-farming positions. Experts say this trend is expected to grow as the number of working women increases while the number of men in the workforce declines. So what's behind the shift, you ask? Experts point to the economy moving away from traditional male-dominated jobs in sectors like manufacturing toward a service-based business she model. She says, well, she's surrounded by two guys. <laughs> and there's one behind the camera, too. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Interesting. And they go to um, more women are in uh, college now, too, right? That's true. Yeah. There that's are more women enrolled in college than them, but it's been that way. It's been that way now. Yeah, for, for a about while. a decade or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, about 35 passengers on the metro in the Czech capital, Prague, took part in the annual No Pants Subway Ride. 
Now in its 20th year. I bet there was more uh, men than women doing this one, though. The participants Jeez. traveled in just their underwear from the waist down. According to the organizer, the purpose is to make other passengers look around them instead of only watching their cell phones. I guess that is one way to do it, isn't it? Trouserless riders also appeared in other cities around the world, including London and New York. So what would you call that? Like corporate casual? Like, what would the style of dress be for that? No pants Wednesday. Look at <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. I, I well. mean, that business on the top. I <laughs> Party on the bottom? I don't think I've seen a single... <laughs> okay, looking at this video, they're all dudes. That's I've what I said. I've not seen a single woman doing this. I think... This. I, oh. She's got jeans on. Yeah, she doesn't look like she wants anything to do with this. No, she's, she's like, done. no. She's, she, she's reading her book, too. Um, Could you imagine being the photographer <laughs> getting all this B-roll? No. <laughs> look, it, it's seriously, it's like, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's tons of men coming down the, the escalator. <laughs> Uh, that, Bob, we have a news story for you to shoot today. Do you We're think gonna need he's to got go to pants in his briefcase? <laughs> you <laughs> like, might. Like, are these people going to work with well, them? Like, why would you? <laughs> oh, I mean, you. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. Europe. Uh, there, apparently, <laughs> there's Europe. a girl. There was a girl in that shot. Oh, there's a girl right there. Yeah. Well. She, yeah. Okay. Yeah. One. And she's got a long jacket on too. And a long okay. jacket. <laughs> yeah. Oh, y you know. Yeah. Europe. They said it was happening in New York, too, so, hey. I don't believe... The trend is coming over. Oh, man. Uh, well, you know, I guess we better we better get... Get know, on the wagon. Here. Yep. <laughs> we'll just keep on going with this yeah. one. A lonely Japanese billionaire is seeking a life partner who can, <coughs> excuse me, accompany him on his upcoming trip to the moon. Yusaka Mazawa, the eccentric head of an online fashion empire with a net worth of approximately $2 billion, according to Forbes, famously paid his way to become the first private passenger to visit the moon with Elon Musk's aerospace company, SpaceX. He rang in the new year by holding contest, a contest to give away $9 million to, her tw to his Twitter followers and is now holding another contest of sorts on Twitter. This time he released this video in hopes of finding his life partner. The billionaire said he wants to find a female partner and with her he would want to shout their love and world peace from outer space. The deadline to apply is this Friday. Okay. If, All right. So should I apply, guys? If this <laughs> is that it, a, yeah, why not? I mean, if if this if this guy's worth two billion dollars and he's struggling to find somebody to date, then is there any hope for I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For you? <laughs> I'm a, I think I'm gonna be okay. I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I mean, um, so I'm gonna whoa. apply. We'll see how this process goes. It's not a one-way. Like you come I back, think right? One of the conditions. It's space <laughs> a one-way. A one-way ticket to the moon. It's or is it Mars? Mar maybe it's something. no. Mar no. None of it's supposed to be a one-way ticket. I mean, if it yeah. is a one-way ticket, something went horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Yeah, but it, uh, it's that's gonna take quite, you. That's quite the uh, the trip too. Yeah. If um. You're just meeting somebody. It's, you know, going on a long really getting to know someone yeah. real fast. Talk about an icebreaker. Yeah. Like 238,000 miles. I yeah. think a lot there quicker was than one other, on um, there was one other piece that I heard about it that he said, like, the person needs to be a positive person. So I guess he's got that going for him, maybe. Okay, well, that eliminates, nice. well, that, that eliminates half the people I know, <laughs> <laughs> if not <Right>. more. Right. <laughs> okay. Still to come on the morning show, Nev is here from the Champaign County Humane Society. He's our pet on the set today. That's right, and Elsie Hedge Speth of the Urbana Park District is here to show us how we can move forward with our goals in today's healthy living. We'll be right back.